Lady Barbara Abney Hastings is Countess of Loudoun and the owner of Ashby Castle. My family have lived on this land since 1461. And it's rather a strange feeling walking around these ruins and seeing where the Lord and his lady lived their lives and brought up their children. I think old families like mine have had a great influence on our present day society. This is the ruins of the family chapel and underneath is the family vault where a lot of my ancestors are buried. And this crucifix was brought back by my uncle from over Amagal, where they, at this time of year, they do the passion play. This tomb is the tomb of Francis Hastings, the second Earl of Huntington. His father, the first Earl, was a childhood playmate of Henry VIII. Francis married Catherine Poole, granddaughter of the Catholic martyr, Blessed Margaret Poole, Countess of Salisbury. And their eldest son, Henry, was a staunch Protestant. He's known in history as the Puritan Earl. Just as staunch a Protestant in her own way was Selina, Countess of Huntingdon. She was a friend of Charles and John Wesley and with them helped to found a Methodist church so my family really has had connections with both churches, the Catholic and the Protestant church. And though the battles and the struggles of the past may have been appropriate in their own day, I feel in this day and age that they are quite, there's no excuse for them and that we do need to be united. Nineteen seventy nine was a bad year for Brian and Pam Hall. Brian's misfortune was the second to strike the family. I was driving home late one night, in too much of a hurry, lost control of the car. I felt a bump, and then apart from a few moments uh, of semi consciousness where I told a passerby who was helping to phone my wife and tell her I'd be late, 
uh, I passed out and uh, came round being asked by a man in a white coat whether I was, would sign to have half my leg removed. When you came round from the anaesthetic and realised they'd had to amputate, how did you feel? As I became fully conscious, there was a fleeting moment of panic. I'm going to be a cripple. That sort of feeling. And I was amazed by the fact that very quickly a much more constructive view took over within myself. When one imagines oneself spread eagled on the ground and a car coming down to land on one, I, I think it must be as near as I will ever know to a miracle, to an act of God, that I was spared with so little. But this was the second piece of appalling news you'd had in six months, wasn't it? Yes, that's right. Um, in May, our son had an accident and died f four hours later, not recovering consciousness. I think I was scared, really, how my husband was going to accept it all after what had happened already last year. I, I'm, I feel convinced in my own mind that I was helped by God and by Matthew. And I realised that instead of being full of self-pity, which I would have expected of myself, I was full of thankfulness that I'd been spared in the way that I had. And it is this that leads me to choose Now Thank We All Our God. The words of the hymn, I think, have a great deal of meaning for people who find themselves in this sort of position. <laughs> The vicar of Ashby de la Zouche is Canon John Bowers. Ashby is a growing market town and its population has increased considerably in the last few years. We're steeped in history in the town, it's everywhere, but of course in the end it's the future that matters and it is for the future that the community must work and build. Any parish priest surely has got to try and share in the life of the community somehow. One way I do this is by being involved in the local schools. After all, here are tomorrow's citizens. You're being with the children, you're sharing their life and concerns, and at the same time, you're trying to put over your work and your concerns as a parish priest. Well, you'll notice after the prayers and the Bible reading, the vicar holds the baby in his arms. He says some special prayers all our work will be pretty ineffective unless it's rooted in worship. And at the heart of our worship is our parish communion. Here we offer to God all our life and all our work. And here we receive in return the living bread. 